Out of the gate with Brandon Graham finding out via swoop. And is there any other way to find out, <laughs> right. <Brandon> Brooks, <laughs> that BG is the Eagles 2022 nominee for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. It's an award that honors players for community service as well as on-field play. And Brandon Graham's foundation, Team Graham, helps kids in his hometown of Detroit and here in Philadelphia. It's a well-deserved honor for one of the city's most beloved athletes. We welcome you to Bird's Huddle, powered by Points Bet. Barrett Brooks, I'm Michael Barkan, and they're finally letting us sit down. How's it feel to take a load <laughs> off, man? Now we can sit down, you know, conversate, you know what I'm saying? All we need is a cup of coffee here. We can talk football. They just got to carry us upstairs when, the, <laughs> when we're done. Sitting back and relaxing. An accusation leveled at Jonathan Gannon by his critics. But, but the Eagles boast one of the top defenses in the NFL. Here is the defensive coordinator today with the Bird's Eye View, presented by Ocean. Casino and Resort in Atlantic City. Every game's different, you know, what you what you know when we develop the game plan, you know, early in the week and talk about with the head coach, like here's what we want to do and this is what's important to, you know, you never want to uh, get beat by their bread and butter players or plays. So you hopefully you have stuff to combat what they do. And um, each game's a little bit different, but I thought that the, the, the plan was set up and the players really executed the plan in a way that didn't allow them to get going and, and you know, score points how they've been scoring points. So ultimately, the players did a really good job of, of winning their one-on-ones and playing, you know, good team defense. Which brings us to Barrett's three-point stance presented by your Mercedes number one. You'd think Jonathan Gannon is silencing his critics, but they won't shut up. Is there something, the complaints of the way he runs the defense, is there something to them? Bro, that's, that's just, this is how we are in Philadelphia. We are a type that we want to argue about everything. We want to complain about everything. We call us Negadelphia. Well, hey, at this point, if you take away what he did last year, just, just erase that from your mind. Don't have that preconceived notion of what you think a Gannett defense should be. And just rate what you see right now. That's all you need to do. Ray, what you see right now, they have done everything to be one of the top defenses in the league. I mean, come on, they're first in all these categories. Um, you know, second in sacks, uh, first in takeaways. Um, I mean, they have done everything possible to be the best defense that he could be with the players that he has assembled. And that's the biggest thing. He now has the players to run his defense that he did have last year. These players here are customized to what his strengths are on calling a defense. A bend but don't break, not necessarily like that, but a defense in which he takes advantage of the players that he has. I mean, look at the guys in key positions. Gannon has put guys in like T.J. Edwards. Leaves the team in, 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 in tackles. 109 tackles, has two sacks. Kazir White, the other linebacker. The two guys that play the most on the field in the middle of the defense have the most tackles. And they're the guys that should have the most tackles. The linebackers in your defense should average more tackles than anybody else. And that's exactly what you have. These two, uh, Kazir Heights has 77 tackles. Both guys are one and two in tackles. Then you got, you know, guys that can rush the passer. At this point, Javon Hargraves has eight sacks. Hassan Reddick has nine sacks. Both of these guys would be guaranteed double-digit sack guys this year. Guaranteed. We got five games left, and, 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 and Hassan has nine sacks. Hargrave has uh, eight sacks. This point, you look at, you know, what the projection is, they'll have more than double-digit. What was the last time we had that? How would you rate him, though, as a defensive coordinator? Like, is it the talent that he's got, or is it the way he is designing the scheme for the talent? It has to be a little bit of both, because he didn't have really guys, uh, as far as your front seven, that really jump off the screen. He have guys that are very consistent on how they play. Look at the defensive line. He brought in two guys to stop the run. They were bad against the run. At this point, they're ranked like 17 against the run. They're moving on up. They, you know, they were worse than that last week. Now they have guys starting to settle in to that 50 defense. Guys like Joseph. Guys like Sue. Uh, Hargraves is starting to settle in a little bit. These guys are starting to take turns right now of being great on first down. And that was the Achilles heel of this defense. They could never have success on first down. First down used to kill them. So now when the, you know, all the success the offense is having, they were getting five yards a pop, six yards a pop, seven yards a pop. Now they're, you know, when they get to second and two, second and three, third and two, it's easy to go out there and convert a third down when it's third and manageable. Now they're keeping them in third and long, which is allowing them now to rush the passer. That's what you want 
going to get. You know, I heard an old defensive, uh, old defensive coach say, you have to earn the right to rush the passer. You got to stop the run to do uh, first to do that. So these guys are now stopping the run, which is giving them more results on third down because now they have to pass and put them in no passing situation. Those guys can pin their ears back and go, and they can go hunt. And that's the difference between what you saw last year and the previous years. We never got in a situation where we were good on first down. Now they are. These guys are playing great now, so now they can go out there and execute, you know, and use these cornerbacks we have. We have great corners. Slay. You know, Bradbury, great corners. They should call them Smith Barney because they've earned it. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> Jalen Hurts, 2022 season, right here, right now, is better than Carson Wentz's 2017 MVP caliber season. True or false? True. Absolutely true. Because he brings more to the table than Carson Wentz brought to the table. Yes, Carson had a magnificent year, a stellar year. They had won before he got hurt. They were like 10 and 2 at the time. You know, going into that game, they actually won the game that he played and he got hurt in. But look at their statistics. You know, they're right in par with us. And, and let's admit this Carson had one more game more than Jalen Hurst has at this point. We're talking about 20 touchdowns, only three interceptions. Carson had 33 touchdowns with just seven interceptions. I mean, he could go out there, he could have four touchdowns this next game. Look at the QB rating, 108 to 101. Look at that, 609 yards rushing. I mean, that's the biggest factor right there. 300 is nothing to sneeze on. And then the rushing touchdowns, nine rushing touchdowns. The Cowboy of play that Jalen Hurst is executing right now puts him in the upper echelons, just like it did at Carson Wentz that year, to win the MVP. I believe he would have stayed healthy. He would have won the MVP. He would have earned the MVP. Well, right now, you look at Jalen Hurts, he's riding that same thing. But the determining factor on what makes me tend to say that Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback is his leadership, his locker room presence, how he works the game. He's the first one in, the last one to leave. The respect that he has on the team with not just the offense, but the defensive players is off the chart. He acknowledges that he has to be a leader on his team and be the vocal leader and be somebody that everybody looks up, not just the players in that locker room, but also the coaching staff. They all can come to him and talk to him. He has been exactly what you want in an NFL caliber quarterback that's ranked one of the top three in, um, quarterbacks in the league. Yeah, and, and that detracts from Carson Wentz's legacy. He failed to be a leader Absolutely. after he returned from that Absolutely. knee surgery. Absolutely. Number three, the New Orleans Saints are the gift that keeps on giving. They <laughs> lost last night blowing a 13-point lead with under five minutes to play to Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. That drops New Orleans to four and nine on the season, and the pick they owe the Eagles would currently be fifth overall. How about Chicago, L.A., and Denver? How many more <laughs> games will they win? Can the Saints get to the number two pick? Because Houston's just about locked up the number one pick. Right. What do you think? Can the Saints get to two? You know what? I don't think they'll get to two, but I will say this. It's unbelievable that, you know, I, I, Dennis Allen right now is pissed off because he inherited a team right now that, that, you know, only has four wins with the vaunted defense that they have. How do you not win more games with that defense? He's a defensive-minded coach with a defense, and he let Tom Brady that last drive drop all the way down Three the field seconds left. and score. I mean, come on now. At the end of the day, I can see this team picking in the top, and those players like that, that's what you want. A top five pick, you can be any, you can pick what you want. Jalen Carter, don't. Will Anderson. I mean, Will Anderson at this point is the number one defensive player in the league. Why not pick him up? Him coming off the end, I mean, that's a blessing deal right there. To, for, like you said, the gift that keeps on giving. I cannot believe that we just hoodwink and bamboozle the Saints into giving us that. And oh, by the way, at this point, we're going to win the Super Bowl yeah. and have a top pick in the top ten? Yeah. That, that, that's unheard of. We're about to win the Super Bowl. I'm saying it right now. I'm predicting. I'm speaking it to existence. <laughs> we are going to win the Super Bowl and have a top 10 pick. How about that? <laughs> that's amazing. And that's Two first-round picks now. And, and we that, already have a quarterback. And that's all tribute to Howie Roseman. No so, question. So, so hoodwink the Saints, hoodwink the Titans, and we'll talk more about that as we continue. Plenty still to get to as we huddle up. Here's the playbook presented by your Philadelphia area Cadillac dealers. What's the deal with the Cowboys? What's the concern level with them? ESPN projects Dallas as more likely to win the Super Bowl than the Birds? They're idiots. What? They're idiots. The Giants <laughs> are up next for the Eagles. How tough a challenge will it be playing Big Blue 
and the Titans have fired their GM. As mentioned, how much did A.J. Brown's revenge game against his former team have to do with it? We'll discuss as we continue Birds Huddle.